Well, God bless you, House of Praise family. Pastor Steve here for our very last Thirsty Thursday online for the year. And I trust that everybody's having a wonderful uh, Christmas season and uh, we're excited about celebrating Jesus. And it's always an exciting moment to celebrate what Jesus is doing in our lives and uh, all that he has done. It's been an incredible year, interesting year in a lot of ways. And uh, But um, I believe with all my heart that everything's working together for good because that's the promise in the Word of God, that everything will work together for good to those who love Him and are the called according to His purposes. So let's get into the Word of God here tonight, and uh, this is our New Year's Eve version of Thirsty Thursday Online, and uh, I, I've just been sharing some good things this month that God has shown me, and I trust that they've been a blessing to you. Our theme this Christmas was we believe in miracles. And boy, do we believe in miracles. We always have, Carol and I. And uh, I trust that you have too. And, uh, and, and blessings on everybody in our church family that is watching this video right now and anybody else that would be watching this YouTube uh, video. The blessings of God on you and your household, your family, and uh, on this very, very, very special time of the year. Let's uh, let's start with prayer and then we'll get into the word of God. Thank you Lord for all that you've done. Thank you God for every blessing. Thank you for this Christmas. Thank you for the celebration of Christ. Thank you Lord for all the promises in the word of God. God you've given us so many wonderful promises oh God. And Lord we just want to say thank you Lord. Thank you God for all that you have done. God you've been so good in so many ways. And Lord, all your promises are true and they're real. And Lord, we can count on every promise, oh God. We know, Father, that as you have stated things in your word, we can count that they are real, they are true, and they will come to pass. Amen. So Lord, we thank you, God, for every blessing. We praise you for who you are. And Lord, we honor your presence now. Be with us in this study in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. I really enjoy coming to you. This has been an interesting venture for us this year as we have um, went online with our Thirsty Thursdays. I, I do miss getting together around our big kitchen table here in our home, and we'd love to start that up again. And just hasn't worked out yet, but uh, for a lot of reasons. But uh, and, and we really always enjoyed that. But the Lord has made this a blessing too, and I trust that it's blessed so many of you. And uh, for those of you that take the time to, to listen to what God is saying through the mouth of his servant, and I am indeed just a servant of Jesus Christ. I'm here to serve you, the church of House of Praise, and, and, uh, and to be a servant of the Lord. So uh, I'm just very excited about what he's been saying. And I know that it's all good. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very special revelation that we've had this Christmas on We Believe in Miracles. We talked about the greatest miracle. The greatest miracle is the love of God. And then when it uh, gets applied to our life <clears throat> and, uh, and when we start living uh, like Christ lived, thinking like him, talking like him, responding like him, I mean, that's it, it, the greatest miracle is the love of God, without a doubt and having the love of God shed abroad in our hearts so that we become like Jesus Christ, without a doubt. Then the Lord gave us some other wonderful topics uh, about the miracle of forgiveness. What a powerful time that was. And uh, boy, that's that's really crucial to learn how to forgive, let go. And uh, we talked a lot about this uh, that this Christmas and it was beautiful. Then we talked about having an antidote for love deficiencies. That was a Thursday Thursday. That was a great study that the Lord gave us. We, we have love deficiencies, all of us do, and we need to take an antidote, if you will. And that's the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, where we can overcome and, uh, and, and, and get away from all these deficiencies in our life that cause all these complications. Amen. So antidote for deficiencies was a great study. Then we talked about living in the fourth dimension. What a powerful time that was. And God gave me this 
vision of, of we live in a 3D world, but there is a fourth dimension. Amen. Scientists feel that there's many as 10 dimensions, but they don't even know how to access them. But we do know that there is that fourth dimension, and that's the realm of the spirit and uh, the eternal realm. And uh, we want to talk to you a little bit more about that in this study here tonight. So may God bless you and your family. I guess, boy, that's what's on my heart uh, as I'm just sharing my heart here tonight. I, I just speak the blessing of God over our church family, over every one of your biological families and, and all of your extended families and friends. Whatever your life consists of, the blessing of God we speak over you. And as we go into this new year, we know it's going to be a great one. God has wonderful plans for us. All his plans for us are good so that we will have a bright and an exciting future without a doubt. So uh, let's get into what God is saying to us here tonight. I believe the Lord is impressing upon us as we've studied the miracle of Jesus. And uh, at Christmas time, there's no better time than to examine the miracle of Jesus. We've talked about miracles from many, many different aspects, but there is no miracle like the miracle of Jesus. And uh, let's just start with this. The wonderful prophecies that God just allowed the ancient prophets to provide for us and as we look forward to Jesus. And that's why I love to look at the prophecies in the Old Testament and how beautiful and powerful they were. Every one so accurate. And then the miracle of his birth, which is really what we're celebrating at Christmas time here. The miracle of his birth was so incredible. The angel Gabriel came to Mary and she was only like a 14 year old girl, just a young Jewish girl that uh, you know, had this incredible experience with this angel. This angel said, hey, you know, you are, you are favored, highly favored of God, and uh, this is what's going to happen. And, uh, of course, the angel explained what was going to happen, and she was afraid. Of course she was afraid. And then, of course, the angel calmed her down, I'm sure, and, and, uh, and then she came to this incredible conclusion. As you have spoken, according to your word, let it be unto me. At that point, I believe, is when she became pregnant with the Word of God. Amen. With the Word of God. So therefore, uh, the child that she bore was the Son of God. And uh, what an incredible miracle, the miracle of his birth. And then, even though we know very little about his childhood leading up to his ministry, uh, but we, we we know a little bit about when he was 12 years old. We know that that was fantastic, what he did, and the recording of him talking to all the, the Jewish leaders of the time in the temple. I mean, that was a phenomenal thing. It blew his parents away. They didn't know what to think of that. And, of course, Mary knew deep in her heart what the angel had originally said. So they were comforted by that. But, boy, that was an incredible experience, I'm sure, at the to actually see their son doing what he did there. And then, of course, we know what happened at the baptism of Jesus, how the Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove, and, and the dove rested upon his shoulders, and he heard the voice from heaven, and what an incredible experience that must have been for John the Baptist, uh, you know, baptizing Jesus because he knew who Jesus was. He knew who he was. So that was an incredible experience, which launched this ministry, this incredible ministry. I like to call it that Jesus was uh, the Holy Spirit, unquenched and, and unhindered, personified for three and a half years. Amen. And uh, that, that's really our goal is to not allow our ministry and our outreach to others be hindered in any way. And it's got to be all empowered by the Holy Spirit. So that's what Jesus said. We're talking about the miracle of Jesus here tonight. And uh, so it, it was um, an experience for the, the apostles that were chosen. Wow, what an incredible group of guys that they were. And, uh, and then the experience that Jesus had with Mary Magdalene casting out the demons and, and all the things that we read about in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What a phenomenal life that he lived. And, and I, I, I just want to just emphasize everything about Jesus was a miracle. Everything. He was, he was conceived as a miracle. He was birthed as a miracle. He lived uh, as a child as a miracle. 
everything in his life was in power and by the empowered by the Holy Spirit as the miraculous, without a doubt. All the miracles that he performed in his teaching and his profound views and all the things that, <laughs> it, it was just so incredible. We get so excited when we think about this man, Jesus, and how he is our best friend. And, uh, and we're seated on the right hand of the Father with him because he chose us and he loves us so, so very much. So this whole thing is a miracle. The whole story is a miracle without a doubt. What I wanted to focus on here in this study tonight was uh, the importance of understanding where God exists and where Jesus exists. I, I like to call it, and, and you can look at it from a lot of different angles uh, from the Word of God, but I like to refer to it as the realm of the eternal, okay? Uh, God, uh, Jesus lives in eternity past, uh, eternity present and eternity future. So therefore, where he lives is in the eternal realm, without a doubt. And uh, uh, with his relationship with the Father, even though he was a man, okay, he was the son of man, and uh, he uh, got up in the morning and ate breakfast and, and no doubt took a shower and, 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 you know, lived his life very similar to what you and I live because he was indeed a man. But his relationship with the Father was so intense and so beautiful and so powerful that he was able to access this incredible realm, what we call the eternal realm. I often put it this way. How do you think he walked on the water? How do you think that he he fed the 5,000? How do you think that he raised the dead? How do you think that he taught like he taught? How do you think he handled the works of darkness and overpowered them, even to the most incredible enemy, the last death, or the last enemy, which was death? And uh, uh, this incredible miracle man that we know is of Jesus Christ, uh, he had access to the Father, because of his relationship with the Father, and he said that we can have this relationship too, okay? In fact, he said, everything that I do, you will do, okay? Everything that I do, you will do, and even more. So it was clearly um, three and a half years of making known the Father to the world, okay? Making everyone, everything about the Father. Now he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So that was an incredible revelation of Father God that he made. Then he handed that baton over to the church, okay? He said, I'm going to come and, and, and empower you. The Holy Spirit is going to come and empower you. And after this, the Holy Spirit that comes upon you, you will receive power. You will receive power to be witnesses unto me and uh, all throughout the world, in your local area, at your local church level, and uh, throughout the world. So th this is an incredible promise of God. So this is, this is phenomenal. And I just wanna share just a couple of things here with you that the Lord has given me. You know, the Lord has placed wonderful dreams and visions in you. Don't lose them. Don't throw them away. Don't ignore them. This is so very important. Don't forsake the dreams and visions that the Lord has given you. Uh, the prophet Habakkuk said, when you have a vision, God's given it to you, write it down. And it's very important to record it because God at his appointed time will make it a reality. Though it tarried for a while, wait for it because it will surely come to pass. Now, this is a word of advice from you on this New Year's Eve version of um, Thirsty Thursday online, okay, on this 30th day of December 2021. Don't forsake the dream that God has placed within you. Yes, we may have to crucify our flesh, and that's important, and the carnal nature, but God never asked you to be different than what he had made you. He has made you a certain way. He has given you vision. He has given you ability, talent, all the things that he has placed within you, he expects you to use, okay? He expects me to use. Lord, forgive us if we have failed to use all the talents that you have given us. And that's really, really important, okay? He put things inside of us for a purpose, amen? He put things in me that we're supposed to step into so that we can 
impact the culture in which we live. Oh yes, impact, uh, yeah, make contributions to society and affect everybody around us. I really do believe that. We're not to live in a, in a bubble. We're not to live in, uh, you know, being hid away. No, I, I really believe with all my heart that we are intended by God to have a positive impact on everyone around us. Amen. Jesus didn't go through all that he went through so that we could just do church, guys. It's a lot more than that. As important as this is, as important as the teaching of the word is, very godly, the preaching of the word, getting together in fellowship. In fact, the word of God tells us to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. And so much more as we see the day of Christ approaching. It's really important that we get together and we have fellowship one with another and don't allow ever allow the devil to shut that down, okay? The enemy will fight that and he will try to keep you from that fellowship and it's really important that we be very, very careful. The Hebrews 10.25 would be the scripture there. Remember, the realms of darkness and all the difficulties that we face in life are illegal in the kingdom of God. We're talking about the kingdom of God being established. You know, when Christ said it is finished, he meant what he said. There was a lot of profound things that he said. And uh, uh, here's one here in Isaiah 60, 1 to 3. Arise and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And I speak that prophetically over you as we go into this new year. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. Boy, we see that all around us. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. And the Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of of your rising. Amen. Everything within us has been wired to sense and to and to carry the glory of God. Amen. Without a doubt. Arise and shine for the glory shall be seen upon you. And this is what I'm talking about here. We're talking about the miracle of Jesus and him living within us. And as we approach this new year, this is the glory that we can live in without a doubt. Okay, even great people in the Old Testament that weren't even born again. Think about King David, all the time that he spent in the presence of God. And he actually, you know, had such a relationship with Father God that he, he actually wrote at one point that his, that his soul hungers. He used the word hunger. It was like a, a hunger in his soul. And that's why I have even subtitled this message that the Lord has given me, an insatiable hunger for the miraculous. Amen. All of us hunger after it. But the Lord told me to use the word insatiable because that means impossible to satisfy. Okay? Impossible. We always want more. We know that there is more. And God is saying we should always want more. Amen. You know, this is a great time to be alive. This is a great time. The anointing is on the church of Jesus Christ. And I believe the power of the Holy Spirit is within us in a big time way. I'm telling you, I just, I just believe the anointing is going to increase and increase and increase as we go into the end time. The closer we get to the rapture of the church, the greater the increase of his anointing will be. There will also be provision. There will also be healing, health, miracles, signs, and wonders following the teaching of the word of God. See, I really do believe in miracles. And uh, uh, that's why it's so easy for me to teach this because we have experienced encounters with God. One of the main scriptures that God has given me and it's, it's been like, like a cornerstone, if you will, for our church. And, uh, and that scripture is 2 Corinthians 4, 18, okay? Where it says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things that we see are only temporary, but the things that we don't see are eternal. Eternal in value, they, they exist in the realm of the eternal, and, and that's what we need to keep our eyes focused on not looking at what we see. It's only temporary anyway. That's what happened with the angel Gabriel when he came to the Virgin Mary and he said, rejoice. Well, rejoice about what? I mean, this was the first visitation. Amen. This is important. This was nine months before the baby was even born. Okay. But 
the reason he said rejoice to the Virgin Mary was that the, the birth of Christ was already settled in heaven. Well, your salvation and, and, and your, um, your relationship with God, it's already settled in heaven. It's already there. I believe with all my heart when Christ said it is finished and, and he uh, declared that, that it is finished when he hung on the cross, he really meant what he said. The powers of the devil were completely broken, totally broken over our lives. And the victory and the vision of what he had in store for us was all ready to go. And I do believe that. I believe that when we ask the Lord for something according to the word of God, that it is already done in the eternal realm. That would include healing. That would include, um, you know, uh, relationship issues, maybe financial problems, whatever it is, even though we don't see them right away. Remember, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen. For the things that we see, they're only temporary. However, the things that we don't see, they are uh, the, the, the issues that dwell in the eternal realm, okay? And I want to use that term over and over. Amen. There is so many things that I would love to share with you, and, and, and I have shared quite a bit with you uh, over the last uh, couple of months. And uh, But there's a few things that I just definitely feel like the Lord wanted me to share with you today, okay? Um, I believe a key thing to remember is that we are spirit beings and not uh, just human beings. We, we tend to view ourselves as a as a physical human being, maybe having a spiritual experience. Well, that's not really the way it is at all. We're spirit beings is what we are. We are spirit beings, okay, having a temporary human experience, okay, not the other way around. So that's really important. I've always said this, that when our friend Almea passed away, he's more alive now than he ever was when he was with us, amen. The closer we get to Jesus Christ, that's the source of all life. And of course, when when our body expires, as it did with Al earlier this year, okay, the body expired, therefore uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So the closer he got to Jesus, and, and that came when, when he was like delivered from his body, if you will. And then uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So he's more alive now. He has, he has more vitality, if you will. He has more spiritual insight. He knows more about heaven than all of us all put together. Amen. And uh, there are so many good things. I'm excited for anybody that dies in Christ. Amen. We use the word die. We know it, it's not really that the body expires and is cremated or buried or whatever. Um, but the soul lives forever. Amen. So it's important. I've had many people look at each other in our services on a Sunday morning and say, uh, look at each other and, and just declare that, uh, you know, I'm never going to die. I'm never going to die. And, and we will not die. Amen. We will. Excuse me, we will live forever. The Holy Spirit comes on us like it came upon Mary and revealed Jesus. Okay, the Holy Spirit comes upon the witness of the written word and Jesus is revealed once again. The Holy Spirit comes upon a surrendered believer like you or me and Jesus is revealed once again. It's the Spirit of God coming on the natural to reveal the eternal. Amen. And that's where I'm just going to encourage you to think about this, pray about this, enter the new year, believing that God wants you at a different level than where you are right now. And he's ready to fill you with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Amen. You know, God puts us in positions of trust. And it's important to understand that, that God loves you so much that he's going to allow things to happen in your life and in my life so that we can be um, dependent upon him, okay? He wants to put us into, it's not just belief, belief plus love equals faith, and then faith plus application of that love equals trust, okay? Let me do that again. It starts with belief. Belief plus agape love equals faith. And faith applied, okay, the application of that love, 
brings us into a level of trust. So it's belief, faith, trust. And I believe the Lord wants to move us all into that realm of trust. Amen. It is vital that experiencing the impossible through the work of the Spirit becomes a vital and a regular part of our life. I believe miracles are to be something that we experience every day. If miracles are not normal in our life, then we must come back before God and find out why. Uh, I, I think our relationship to Him maybe sometimes has to be has to be. Uh, correct it. Maybe, maybe there's something in our relationship that isn't just right. So it's really important, okay? Coming into agreement with what God has already said and what he is saying is important. Extremely important, okay? To align ourselves <clears throat> with the word of God. There never should be one word out of my mouth that does not agree or align with the word of God. Misalignment with God's word hinders the release of this glory that we're talking about. Okay, we're talking about Jesus the miracle now, okay, and him living within us and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So misalignment with God's word, listen carefully now, okay, will hinder the release of his glory, which I've taught extensively in our church. I do believe that we are wired to sense and to carry and to host the glory and the presence of God. Amen. What did Jesus mean when he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done? Okay. I think that's one of the most profound things that he ever said. The disciples came to him and said, Lord, we want to think like you. We want to talk like you. We want to be able to pray for the sick and see them healed. We want to lay hands on, we want to do all the things that you do. And then Jesus looked at him and said, all right, now I want you to learn to pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven, start with worship all the time. And then he got into some profound things in what we refer to as the Lord's Prayer. The favorite, my favorite line in that prayer is, and it's all so good, how do you pick one? But my favorite line is, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, okay? And on earth as it is in heaven. I believe that with all my heart that he intended for us to enjoy the glories of heaven here in a different way. We're still in the flesh. We don't have our glorified bodies yet. We're not talking about the kingdom of glory. Kingdom of glory is a future tense in, in, in the Bible. And of course, the book of Revelations talks a lot about it, and there's so much about it in the New Testament. So we know the kingdom that we're talking about, the kingdom of God here, is the kingdom of grace. Amen. We're in the day of grace. We're in the church age. Okay, so we're talking about the kingdom of God being established here on earth, the kingdom of grace. Amen. Everything that God has intended us and, and, and to do through us is to is to approach the impossible, amen, and to say that, yes, Lord, you want us to uh, approach the impossible like it is possible to overcome it. I love what Angus Buchan said, and I've shared this before in our church, uh, the great South African evangelist. He said, the criteria for a miracle is difficulty, amen, but the criteria for a very significant miracle is impossibility. So God has called upon us to what? Approach the impossible. By human standards, we can't do this. We need an absolute dependency upon the Holy Spirit. And that's God's intention. He has designed it so that all of us can have faith in Christ and have this power working in and through us. So the angel shows up to Mary and says, Rejoice, you are highly favored. Typically, you would rejoice after the baby's born, but the angel knew, Gabriel knew that that birth of Christ was already settled in heaven. Amen. And this is a profound statement, okay? This is a very profound statement. There isn't a single person in our church uh, or in, in any church for that matter, in Jersey or, or anywhere, okay, that doesn't need some type of a miracle, some type of, of a healing. But Jesus Christ died on the cross, not only to remove our sins, to eradicate our wrongdoing, but also for our sickness and for our disease and to bring healing and health. The work is finished and it's all existing in the realm of the eternal and we access it by our relationship 
with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what I am encouraging you, the miracle man become Jesus's best friend. I mean, he's, he's your elder brother. You're already seated on the right hand of the Father with him in, in Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. Come on, guys. This is it. This is our moment. This is our moment. Okay? Eternity, really, and the concept of eternity defines every situation that we face. You may be in a big challenge right now, okay? Because of the necessity for your faith to grow or maybe that God wants you to learn something really important. So he's allowing something to happen in your life that, that will help you to grow, that will draw you closer to him. It'll drive you to your knees. And that's really important. And that's why I teach in this church that there's a distinction between thanksgiving, praise, and worship. That's why I teach it that way. Thanksgiving is a grateful heart, okay? And a grateful heart, I'm telling you, that really that really develops our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. A spirit of praise, now that's different. That's declaring the person of God, and that, that, that pierces the darkness. That tears down strongholds. Praise will tear down strongholds every time. A spirit of worship returns to Christ what is rightfully his, amen. He is to be worshiped, amen. And all preeminence has been given to the Son. So every person in our church, every person has been designed by God to invade this realm that we call the impossible or impossibility, which requires the favor of God. All favor, all life, all the source of all strength comes from Father God through Jesus Christ and ministered by excuse me, by the Holy Spirit. When we live in the eternal realm, God's favor makes a huge difference in our life. Amen. There's absolutely no question about it. I, I just believe that God uh, just loves us so much. We are in his favor based on what Christ has done. We just have to recognize it. We have to walk in it. We have to make sure that we are, you know, we've been invited to be the friend of God. You have too. Okay, I believe with all my heart that God has invited me to know God, to be a friend of God, and you have been too. My question to you at this point, have you accepted that invitation? Okay, have you accepted that invitation to be the friend of God? He loves you, and he wants to be your very, very best friend. In the eternal realm, we see that Jesus is extreme. Boy, we're talking about the miracle of Christ, the miracle of Jesus at this Christmas season in this incredible Christmas season this year, we will see that Jesus and everything about him is extreme. For with God, nothing is impossible. Absolutely nothing. No freshly spoken word of God will ever come to you that does not contain its own power and ability to perform itself. Now, I guess I'm really making a strong point of that, okay? No freshly spoken word of God, no rain of truth will come to you that does not contain the power to perform itself. Oh, Pastor Steve, where did you get that? Well, that's in Isaiah 55, 11, one of our favorite passages, and I'm going to read it to you. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void or empty. It shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereto I have sent it. That's Isaiah 55 and 11. That's why the very next verse in the book of Luke was so very important. Then Mary said, Behold thy maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. She knew that having the word of God implanted in her was the secret. Amen. And the angel departed from her at that point. She said, According to your word, let it be unto me. That's when the word of God the living word of God was planted in her body. Therefore, the child that she conceived and bore a few months later was called the Son of God. Amen. Jesus came to reveal the Father and then handed the baton over to the church and said, now the job belongs to the church, but I'm going to empower you to do it. I must go so that the Holy Spirit will come and empower you and give you the wisdom on how to do this, okay? 
uh, the Lord has, has called upon us to represent him, okay? And that's what the church uh, is to do, is to represent Jesus Christ and show the world what the Father is. And, uh, and I, I just believe that if everybody would understand what it is that we're talking about and what the church is presenting, and that's why we must do it out of a pure heart. It can't have any wrong motives or intentions. It can't be with any flesh or any carnal nature at all. It's got to be a focus on Jesus Christ. He is the centerpiece of the church, and it's him. It's only Jesus that we are presenting to the world. So therefore, if there is healing, if there's the miraculous enjoyed, if there's a provision of need, if there's encouragement, whatever happens, it's got to be for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the centerpiece of the church. It can't have any other fleshly intentions or motives. If it does, then that will hinder the flow of the glory of God. The Lord has given us an insatiable hunger for this because I believe with all my heart that we really do desire, all of us desire the miraculous and we want to see that happen more and more. And uh, But there's, there's a spiritual battle that we go through and it's called spiritual warfare uh, in the body of Christ and uh, heavenly realms can refer to both angelic and demonic activity without a doubt. So, so there is angelic activity which we have focused on so far in this study here today, but there's also demonic activity that comes against the church. Amen. But we have the power over that. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. God has no peer. God. The Holy Spirit has no competition here. Amen. No matter what the devil may talk to you, it's a lie. Everything about him is a lie. If he has told you, expect the opposite to happen. Amen. And I do believe that with all my heart. Okay. It's really important we understand that the devil is a liar and the father of lies. He is also the accuser of the brethren. That's why if we get in cahoots with him, if you will, and start accusing one another, and if we hold things in our heart against other people and say things that we shouldn't say, then we are joining forces with the powers of darkness. And that really hinders the glory of God from flowing. Even though you have accepted Christ as your Savior, if we're not careful, we can flow into these things things and it can hinder our relationship with the Father. Amen. Now this is really important. We serve a transcendent God. He lives in the realm outside of space and time and matter. Amen. He lives outside that realm. He is what I call behind the curtain of time. So therefore we have to understand it from that perspective that it's not going to be the same. It's not going to feel human. We don't think of him as a man. We don't think of him in any other way other than this supernatural, transcendent God. He sits on the throne, okay? And the presence of God is where we are. I believe the presence of God is in this room right now. I often say on Sunday morning where the twos and threes are gathered in my name, there I shall be and that to bless. So therefore, if we have five people in the room, 50, 500, 5,000. It makes no difference. The power of the Holy Spirit is there and that to bless, without a doubt. Amen. The Lord is calling upon us as we have studied this morning uh, this, this really important topic of the miracle of Christ, the miracle of Jesus here at this Christmas season. Uh, he's calling on us to walk in this encounter. So it becomes a regular um, occurrence in our lives. Jesus did not fear contamination. It didn't, it didn't bother him who was around him or what was going on. When he spoke, the realities of his world were released into the atmosphere. When we speak the word of God, then the realities of his world are released into the atmosphere around us. Amen. Jesus said, my words, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. So when he spoke, he released the spirit of God into the atmosphere. When we speak, when the church does its job in standing up for what is right and against what is wrong, this is so important. When we are doing what God has called us to do, okay, 
then we are speaking his words and therefore releasing his glory into the atmosphere. Amen. When the spirit is released into the atmosphere, it reveals the reality of the kingdom of God. Amen. And that's what we're all about, to establish the kingdom of God here on the earth. Remember, Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth, the same as it is in heaven. Amen. We keep going back to the words of Jesus. The kingdom is not meat and drink, but it's peace and righteousness and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit. And when we say what the Father is saying, we alter the options of everybody that is hearing those words at that point. When one speaks what God is saying, spiritual advantage becomes available that was not available just a moment ago. Amen. That's how powerful it is. Because reality shifts with declaration. Amen. Nothing happens in the kingdom of God until first there is a declaration. That's why making proclamation over the earth is so powerful. It's not just drawing large crowds. This can be done in your bedroom. It can be done in your closet. You can declare the word of God when you're driving your car. You can be in the shower. You can be anywhere. Amen. And this is important to understand this. Remember, John the Baptist's father proclaimed the, the, the prophetic over his son when he was only eight days old. He was, in, he was in the temple being circumcised, eight days old. That child had no idea what his father was saying. But because he declared and proclaimed the word of God, the reality of it all came to pass. Amen. And the same can happen with you. Amen. There are things that we need to be declared simply because they're true, simply because they are real. Amen. The law and the prophets were sent by God and given for a very specific purpose, okay? To reveal to us that we are sinners, to reveal to us that we need a Savior, to reveal to us the nature of the kingdom of God. That's why the law and the prophets were given. Amen. Jesus covered all of that on the cross, everything. Everything that had to be covered was covered by Christ on the cross. He said in Ephesians, beyond what you can ask or think, asking is your prayer life, thinking is your imagination. And he said, beyond anything that you can ask or think, it's already been provided for by Christ on the cross. I will do in you all that could possibly be done even on your best day. There is no way possible. We can't even begin to compete with the power of the Holy Spirit when we allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in our life. Our inner ache is yes, to be healed. There's a lot of healing needed in our church. And uh, I want to definitely mention that. We've, we've had a lot of physical issues this, excuse me, this year to deal with. And yes, our inner ache is for healing and miracles. And I can sense that in our church. But the ache in our church is even beyond that. Our craving is for a sense of destiny and purpose in the earth. Amen. So God wants to heal, restore our health, our finances, our relationships with him first of all and then with each other. And then that sense of destiny that each and every one of us long for. Amen. A purpose, a purpose in the earth, a purpose in life. This is the moment we've been praying for. This is what we've been praying for. And this is the moment that we've been dreaming of without a doubt. Spirit of God gets released at this level. Literally anything is possible. Guys, I believe with all my heart that the Lord wants to work and, and, and he, he's not looking for anything that we can bring. He wants to do it all himself. But through us, we co-mission with him. We actually get to the point that we will believe that anything is possible. Amen. Anything is possible. Raising the dead, whatever it may be, the changed heart. We talked a lot about that this Christmas season. One of the greatest miracles is, is the changed heart. Amen. When Jesus hung on the cross and declared it is finished, the message has not changed. He was announcing the biggest major shift in the history of mankind that took place at that moment 
and it is done. Say, it is done. And to the degree that we carry this message, to that degree, we will witness and experience this transformation in our lives and in everyone around us, our circle of influence. Amen. This is the day of his encounter, his presence. I believe that with all my heart. Without miracles, it's impossible to declare the gospel, the, the message of the gospel. It's a, we, we owe the world an encounter with Jesus. Amen. The message of salvation and transformation must be accompanied by the impossible being accomplished. Amen. It is an absolute injustice to the world for them to hear a message from us and not see the power that goes with it. So that's where God has taken it. We're talking about the miracle of Christ, the miracles that we believe in, that we have brought great focus to this Christmas season, starting with the miracles of the love of God, which is the most powerful, and into all other types of miracles that are needed. Yes, including healing in our bodies. Amen. Healing and health is something that's greatly needed. Amen. And I want to make sure that you know that I'm focusing on that today. Miracles put on display the nature of God. We owe the world an encounter with Jesus. The message of this church is incomplete without the demonstration of the power of God. Amen. Without a doubt. And this is who you are. This is who I am. This is who we are. This is a new day. Amen. This is a new season. This is a season of miracles. They all look for and they pointed to this day. The prophets pointed to this day. Let's not look for another day. Embrace the day that we're in. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Don't go down that road and say, well, down the road, maybe something will happen. You know, we've been praying about this for 50 years. We haven't seen anything happen here and this and that and the other. And you start sowing all of that, all that doubt, seeds of doubt. I'm telling you right now, we know we need to embrace the day that we are in and the day that we have been given. How much can we really experience in this, in this age of regeneration? Amen. Uh, I'll tell you right now, the Lord is, is so ready. He is like a, a horse coming out of a gate. He is so ready to do. He wants to do more for you than what you are willing to let him do. Amen. You know, Moses' face was, uh, was radiated by the glory of God. I want to refer to this now because, uh, you know, he, he saw God's goodness. He had a revelation in the presence of God. And in 2 Corinthians 3, 7 to 10, but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones, okay, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not even look on his face. He had to be covered with a veil, amen, which glory was actually passing away. How will the ministry of the spirit be so much greater, amen? so much greater. That's why we call Hebrews the book of the better. Read Hebrews the 11th chapter and you will see all those that trusted God that didn't even see the victory come through, but yet they knew that God was working and his promises were real. The ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory, without a doubt. Is there anybody here that is listening to the, excuse me, to this video today. Is there anybody here that says, boy, I, I would like to know this Jesus that you're talking about. This pastor on this video is talking about the miracle of, of Jesus, the miracle of the impossible being made possible, the miracle of the prophecy of his birth and his miraculous birth and life and the incredible life that he lived. He lived in power, died in power, he dismissed his own spirit, amen. And he was resurrected in power. He ascended in power. And yes, he's coming back in power. And if you don't know this, Jesus, that we have been so careful to share with you today at this very special time of the year, I, I invite you to get to know him. He, he just loves you so much. He wants to forgive anything wrong that you've done. He, he wants to just restore your life. He wants to heal you in your emotions, in your body. He wants to just be your best friend. The Apostle Paul said at one point, don't miss 
the simplicity that is in Christ. Now let's pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Lord Jesus, I accept your free gift. I accept your free gift of forgiveness and your promise of eternal life. I want to make you my Lord and my Savior. I just want to be your best friend. A simple prayer like that. Now you are accepted in the kingdom of God. You're a child of God. And uh, you're part of the family. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. If you've prayed that prayer, then the Lord has already accepted you, has already forgiven your sin, has already taken care of everything that you have need of. There's a lot of things in your life. And like we said, a need of healing is a big thing right now in our church family. And I just know that God wants to do so much, even more than what we could think or ask. So may the blessing of God be on you now. Let's just finish that prayer. Lord Jesus, I receive the free gift of salvation. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your promise of eternal life. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Isn't that beautiful? I just trust that this was a blessing to you today. I've just shared my heart the best that I could. There's a lot more detail I could share, but we'll get to that a little bit later. But right now, I just really believe the Lord just wants to do something really special for you. Going into this new year weekend, into the new year next year, the Lord loves you so much. And he just wants to do more for you than you could even think or ask, imagine, or even pray for. And may God bless you now. And good night.